Hey, Tim here. Welcome to Budget Bronco. Uh, it's hard to believe, but I've actually had the Bronco for just about a year now. Uh, it'll be in two weeks, a full year of ownership. So it's a good time to think about the last year of ownership and share some knowledge and answer a bunch of questions from viewers and commenters. I always appreciate uh, the comments that I get to my videos. Lots and lots of good questions. And I appreciate all the subscribers and I wanted to give some knowledge back to you all and answer questions that I've gotten over the last year. Uh, some of the most common ones, some of the most interesting ones, uh, and just kind of share uh, my year of knowledge with you all. So let's go. Question from subscriber Druby. Druby wants to know why I chose the Bronco in the first place. And uh, probably the biggest answer to that is I've always been a big fan of like retro styling on new vehicles. And the Bronco is certainly an amazing example of that. Um, other cars and uh, trucks that I've liked that also kind of incorporate that retro styling concept, uh, the Chevy Camaro when they brought that back, the Dodge Challenger when they brought the Challenger back is a really great example. Um, the uh, Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon um, as another example. Um, you know, cars that um, kind of have that old school vibe. I've also really liked boxy cars. I've been a big fan of the Jeep Wrangler for many years. Um, you, know, you know, the reason I never bought a Jeep Wrangler is I didn't want to have the same uh, truck that seemingly everybody has. There's just so many of them out there. So uh, I, like, I like the idea of like having a, the Bronco be something that's brand new and was going to be uh, kind of new to the road and uh, not a lot of other people would have, especially when you start to do customizations like I've done to kind of really make it your own. Another thing that really drew me to the Bronco and I was really excited about when they first announced it is the manual transmission. Uh, that was always a uh, for sure uh, thing for me. That was number one on my list of things that I wanted. In fact, I was a little bit bummed when uh, they first released the Bronco and found out that you could not get the uh, manual with the V6. I'm sorry, the uh, six cylinder V6. Um, and um, so, of course, I didn't have the option. Um, but short story, I've been super happy with the 2.3 liter inline four. Uh, but the manual transmission was definitely a really big uh, draw for me in terms of one of the reasons why I bought the Bronco. And probably the last one is I've never had a uh, convertible top vehicle. And man, this has just been awesome. Being able to ride around uh, town with the top off has been one of my favorite things about the Bronco, frankly. And we've had a really, really nice, warm uh, summer here in Pittsburgh, and I've literally had the top off for two months straight. Um, it sits there in the garage. I need to build a hoist and that'll be a future video, uh, but it's been sitting there on the floor of my garage for two months straight because the weather has been nice. Uh, and fortunately, I have the luxury of a second uh, daily driver kind of vehicle, my Jeep Grand Cherokee out there in the driveway. So if the weather is threatening, uh, I can drive that uh, in the rain, uh, which has left me uh, leaving the top off of the Bronco for, like I say, two months straight and just been loving every minute of driving around uh, in the uh, open air. It's been one of my favorite things about the Bronco. So all those reasons, that's why I got the Bronco. Question from subscriber Andy. Andy asked, what are the things that I most don't like about the Bronco? And uh, sitting here in the cockpit, uh, I'll tell you, these are not necessarily in order, but the first one I'll mention is definitely the thing that I like the least about the Bronco. And that is this silly speedometer. Um, you know, you've got your electronic uh, instrument panel, uh, which has uh, attack and also, of course, shows you the miles per hour and uh, you can set it up here. I have mine set so that um, this panel here gives you uh, your uh, boost pressure and your engine temperature, battery charging performance. And this mile per hour gauge is just completely redundant. It's off to the side, so I never end up looking at it. It's just a complete waste of space, and Ford could have done a way better job uh, on the gauge panel there, like they have done, obviously, with the uh, Bronco Raptor, which has an entirely uh, digital gauge set up and is so much nicer. Uh, I really wish I had uh, something like that. That's the thing I like the least about the Bronco. Uh, the other things, in no particular order, 
Uh, the shift boot on this manual transmission is super cheesy. Uh, this vinyl is thin and it just looks really fake. Um, you know, not the rest of these items in a point out are, are obviously not like super big deals, but uh, that's one that kind of bothers me. Another thing that uh, a lot of people have pointed out is just generally speaking, this plastic is really prone to uh, showing all kinds of gouges and nicks and blemishes. Um, you can kind of see them here just from like very light use. You touch it, you know, just like hit it with my fingernail, just puts scratches and marks in it that do not come off no matter how much you uh, rub them. Um, the plastic that they used on the interior of the Bronco is really uh, low quality and that is something that um, you just have to live with because there's really no getting around that. Um, another thing that uh, it bothers me a lot, again, an interior thing. Um, I'm just going to close my door again so it doesn't beep. This light knob there is strategically placed so that I can't tell you how many times getting in and out of the truck you bump that with your knee and uh, have set it to uh, turn on the lights when you weren't really intending to. I've done it probably a dozen times and uh, it does get a little bit annoying. Just a little quirk of the Bronco that I don't love. And the last thing I'm going to mention is um, the paint quality is not awesome. I'm going to point out some places where I have paint blemishes. One of the cool things about the interior of the Bronco is this panel here has the matching paint onto the uh, exterior of the truck. So for me, that's anti matter blue. Um, on the interior here, it's obviously quite dark, but uh, I have a really bad paint blemish there that I didn't notice when I picked up the truck that I wish you would have noticed. I need to hit that with um, a uh, touch-up pen. Another place I've noticed uh, pretty bad paint quality is along the rail, the top of the uh, uh, the rear here where the hard top comes down. I think what happens is Ford maybe is assembling uh, these hard tops before the paint is fully cured. And what you get around these holes is uh, some paint blemishes that are just not awesome. And um, that uh, is, you know, uh, just a, a fairly minor thing. Uh, also on the hinges here, the back tailgate hinges, you can see they paint these, uh, must be after the doors are assembled because you can see down in that crack, a little bit of unpainted uh, surface, which, you know, these are for an off-road truck, I mean, I can live with. Certainly, if this was a Porsche, you'd be horrified. Um, but, um, you know, little things that just kind of uh, can can add up and uh, bother me a little bit. So um, that is a list of some things that I don't love about the Bronco. Minor things, but, uh, yeah, good to share. A question that I have gotten maybe more than any other question in the video where I showed the installation of these 33 inch tires, General Grabber 285, 75 R16 tires, my most watched video, and maybe the most uh, asked question, how are they working out? And I'm going to tell you, I could not possibly be happier with the, the tires that I put on. Um, no issues at all. Um, they are slightly oversized for the 16 inch wheel. Uh, the tires are designed for a 7.5 wide uh, rim and these are only seven inches um, so that has not caused any problems whatsoever it results in something i think is a little bit cool actually which is you know a little bit of that bulged look on the sidewall um, which i think uh, just generally looks cool and you've got a ton of rubber on there with uh, that aspect ratio uh, which looks cool and is also good for off-roading when you air down um, everything about the tires and the tread has been great. Uh, they're not too noisy at all. Gosh, sometimes I see Wranglers driving down the road and you can just hear them from a mile away. Nothing like that. Um, when you're on the highway, the wind noise is louder than the tire noise, so it's really a non-issue. Uh, the grip has been good. The only time I have noticed a little bit of slippiness or slippery <laughs> nature of these tires, uh, uh, there's been at least one or two occasions where when it first starts raining, there's just that light, slick moisture on a road. Uh, in two-wheel drive, rear two-wheel drive, if you hit the gas hard, I got loose on the rear end a couple times. Um, but I think that's going to be the case with just about any off-road tire where obviously you don't have slicks and there's not a ton 
of uh, tire to road contact. Um, it could be a little bit slippery in uh, the uh, early rain wet conditions. Another question that people have asked is, gosh, uh, with these tires, are they gonna wear evenly? Especially since there's the tendency for that bulge to be there. Um, we're gonna test that right now. I'm actually going to sit here with you and measure the uh, tread wear. I've actually not yet done this, so we'll do it together. Um, and let's take a look. Okay, I got my, unfortunately, of course, my uh, calipers here, battery died, so I'm gonna do this manually. But here on the rear of the tire, I'll do measurements on the outside. And that is going to be right at about uh, 11 millimeters. Hopefully you can see that on the gauge. Uh, do another one on the in, right in the middle. That is also 11 millimeters. And then let's do one on the side on this end. And that is uh, right maybe 10 and a half millimeters. So pretty darn even, 10 and a half to 11 millimeters on the uh, rear tire. Now let's go to a front and repeat that process and see if there's any big difference in the front to rear. Okay, here we go. Take on the side here. Eleven and a half. Go to the middle. Middle is eleven and a half. And on the side here. Eleven and a half. So the tires are wearing perfectly even uh, with respect to across the face of the tire. The rear tires, not surprisingly, because um, with the base you don't have the advanced traction control, uh, and I'm driving in rear wheel drive the vast majority of the time, the rear are wearing slightly faster than the front, which means it's a good time for a tire change. Uh, interestingly, another viewer had asked, hey, am I going to do tire changes with the spare? And the answer is definitely yes, uh, for at least a couple of reasons. One, it will be the easiest, right? I can put a jack under one corner, move the spare to the rear, um, then take this one, put a jack under the front, move the rear to the front, and just do the five tire rotation that way. Uh, that'll be easiest. And the other thing I have read uh, on Bronco forums is that the Bronco will automatically recognize the uh, tire pressure monitor sensors inside the tires when you rotate them. Uh, and it'll just pick up the new locations. So a uh, five tire rotation will be really easy. And uh, based on the measurements I just made, probably a good time to do that. I've got about uh, 3000 miles on the truck. So a uh, good time for a tire rotation. One more thing I wanted to mention about the tires. Uh, these general grabbers, as well as I'm told, the, uh, the, the Wranglers or the Goodyears that come with the um, Sasquatch package, uh, throw a lot of rocks just that the tread there is perfect for like a good size nugget uh, rock to fit in there and just get flung um, mud flaps are gonna be a must uh, if you have one of these size tires eventually um, the nature of the Bronco as I showed in the mud flap video is that you know those tires stick out a good four inches from the side of the vehicle and without a mud flap it's just gonna destroy uh, your door and uh, your uh, lower trim panels here. So uh, if you're putting on off-road tires, you are definitely gonna want some kind of mud flap solution. Check out my mud flap video. Uh, I think I came up with a really good solution that has been working out great. Next question, how is my do-it-yourself paint holding up? And again, the answer is really well, no problems. Um, I will say one thing for sure, the white paint on these wheels definitely gets dirty. 
uh, you can see as I'm wiping here um, the difference that yeah, hopefully maybe you can kind of see there with uh, just brake dust and grime and such um, but as I kind of look around these wheels I really don't think I have a single ding or scratch or chip or flake or anything um, somebody asked oh but what about the lug nuts I actually tested that and I'll show a picture here of what it looks like with the lug nut off the wheel um, you can see here no uh, you can see in that picture no real cracking or flaking or anything even uh, from the lug nuts being taken on and off so uh, on the wheels everything looks real good they, uh, I can show you all four of them but they all basically look the same no dings no uh, scratches no um, flaking or anything like that up here on the grill I'll tell you one thing about the Bronco grill is you just pick up a ton of bugs but um, you know I used good prep on this grill if you watch my grill video and um, see those bugs there they just wipe right off um, this is just a microfiber cloth with some uh, glass cleaner on it all those bugs just kind of wipe right off without much difficulty at all there's a big one there yeah i mean it's been great i'll kind of go along here that, that's one little blemish i had from the paint process where a bug flew into my paint and i did the best i could to cover that up so again this is not professional level quality but in terms of how it's holding up you know with rocks getting thrown up into your grill on the highway and stuff like that. These are just bugs, not a single chip um, or like real blemish in terms of paint coming off anywhere. Uh, these are just bugs. I'm going to wipe that. Yeah, I mean, I could sit here and wipe off bugs all day long because you get a ton of them on this grill on any Bronco just based on the real vertical nature of the front of the, the truck. But uh, yeah, the paint both on the uh, grill and on the wheels has been trouble free no problems at all i've been really 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 happy with uh, how those projects turned out another super common question people want to know about fuel economy gosh especially now with gas being uh, five dollars a gallon uh here in pittsburgh and i think in lots of the country i am not, now recall i have not yet uh reprogrammed recalibrated my speedo that's a future project that i need to do and we'll make a video of it probably uh, so add about 10 percent just based on the change in tire circumference because my speedometer and all of my uh, uh readings related to speed and distance are about 10 percent low so my actual fuel economy per uh, this gauge is uh actually going to be a little bit above 19 something like uh 19 and a half ish kind of range uh, which is about right. And then over the last uh, 1,500 plus miles, this one is a calculating average of 17.4. So add 1.7 to that. And again, about uh, 19 miles per gallon. So uh, with this tire combination and the manual transmission, uh, about 19 miles, uh, 19 miles per gallon. Interestingly, uh, you don't really get much more than that, maybe 20 on the highway. And uh, that's all because of aerodynamics. Uh, the increased efficiency is offset by the fact that you're basically driving a brick. And the uh, aerodynamics of the Bronco are really poor. So you don't really get much better than 19 on the highway. Maybe 20, uh, but uh, right in that same range. This is going to be my last question for this video. I'm going to break it up into two parts because I still have lots more questions that I want to answer. Um, but I don't want these videos to be too long. So... Last question for today, part one, how is the wrap holding up on my top? This is kind of difficult to answer, and I think the answer is just okay, pretty good, not perfect. Um, let me show you. Here's one of the top panels, and I'm going to try and zoom in here, and a lot of the... Uh, MIC top that I've wrapped, the wrap is basically perfect and blemish free and looks like the day I put it on. Um, no problems, no bubbles, 
no issues. Now this is a, a crease from when I, again, I installed it as my very first ever wrapping job. Go check out my video of where I wrapped my top. Um, and these are just imperfections and how I just don't know how to wrap as well as a professional. Um, and even along this ridge here, no problems. Along this even bigger ridge here, no problems. Everything holding nice and tight. A eh, little bit of bubbling there, but let me show you some other areas. Let's go down here. Pretty big time bubble, you can see with my thumb here. Uh, I can clear it out um, by pushing it back down, but it, it'll come back. If I came back here in a couple days, that bubble there would be back. Um, some more bubbles along this ridge here. Um, not horrible, like, I, you know. Another nice thing about the top is you, know, you can't really see any of these surfaces when it's on the vehicle. So, I mean, that is pretty good. Let me show you the other front top panel though for comparison here is the second uh, front panel again a little bit of bubbling along that ridge there um, but you know this flat section looks perfect as good as the day i put it on some blemishes here again those are just creases from when i did not do a perfect job installing but let's look over here holy heck wow the <laughs> huge bubbles along this ridge which by the way is less sharp than the ridge next to it right this is more of like a 90 degree bend this is probably more like a 45 degree bend um but giant oh my gosh a giant bubble there and this one is going to be really hard to just take out with with uh, pushing it um so that obviously is not good now the thing that about that though is again this is the first time i had ever wrapped anything the fact that it's sticks really well in some places and just happens to be poor right along that ridge, to me indicates that that is uh, installer error. And uh, with uh, some more practice, or certainly if you took it to professional, I think you're gonna get better results than that. So ultimately the question that everybody asks is, okay, I'm gonna be taking this top back in for a replacement. Uh, if you're aware of the customer satisfaction program that Ford put out on the MIC tops, I'm entitled to take the top in and I will be taking the top in to get a free replacement. What am I gonna do with the replacement top? Will I wrap it again or will I paint it? I just don't know for sure. I'm leaning towards doing it a wrap a second time, um, maybe until I can find somebody uh, who can paint it well. Um, the first people are starting to paint them and uh, seems like I've had pretty good results. So frankly, I'm not quite sure. And when I get that second MIC top, am I gonna do the wrap again? Having learned on maybe how to do a little bit better job, especially on these uh, ridged areas of the top, um, uh, I think I could do them a little bit better the second time. Um, and even if I only get a year out of that wrap, uh, if you watch my wrap video, it cost me $180 uh, in materials, which is uh, you know, really economical in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so I'm probably leaning towards wrapping it again when I get that second top. And then maybe by the time that wrap uh, is done, uh, has worn out uh, maybe now we're two three years down the road of bronco ownership maybe i'll do a paint on the top so that is the answer how is the wrap holding up on the top that is it for part one of my one year uh, ownership q a video uh, hopefully you liked it uh, if you do and you like my other videos please hit that subscribe button, hit that uh, notification bell uh, when I release my part two video in the next couple weeks. You'll get lots more uh, good questions and answers on Bronco ownership. I uh, really appreciate all the viewers, appreciate all you subscribers, and thanks for watching.